G'day guys, I was asked to do a little bit of a how-to on grinding uh, sabre grinds, which is uh, two-thirds height grinds uh, for blades. Uh, it is something a little bit tricky to do freehand on the grinder without a jig, but it can be done. Uh, and a lot of the time you'll do it on stock removal knives. So I whipped up this uh, little blade blank out of some 6mm. One of the things to note is the thicker the stock, the easier the saber grind will be. The thinner the stock, the harder it will be. Because the thicker it is, the more obtuse the angle can be on the bevel, whereas the thinner it is, obviously, the shallower you'll be, and eventually you get to a point where it's so shallow that the grit will actually catch the spine uh, because it's so high. Um, if you're doing really thin stock, I recommend going really slow with a really higher, a much higher grit, something like 120 to roughen your bevels. Uh, today we're going to be using 60 grit. This is a piece of 1084, 6 mil thick, so all we need to mark this out is a 6 millimeter drill bit. I've got a, uh, a, car, a um, <coughs> tungsten carbide drill bit there, and a pair of vernier calipers and some layout fluid. In this case, an art line, big art line pen. So the first thing we want to do is select our grind height. So how high we want the grind is what we're going to mark. I'm going to go for, let's go 22. Now I can mark this just with the, uh, the calipers, but <clears throat> in order to make it easy to see, you can take a sharpie and I can trace that line like that. And so that's going to be our grind line, and we're going to aim to have the coil about the uh, the like that. And then all we do is just mirror that on the other side. And the reason that we do the sides first is because when we come to do, if we're using the um, the edge as a guide, then when we come to do our center line. If we'd been rubbing the calipers along there, it would screw up us in a line. So now that we have that side and that side laid out, we can just, this helps, this is, this is where a really flat surface helps. Uh, this is a piece of marble tile. You can actually buy engineers blocks that are specifically designed for this. But then we're just gonna use a six millimeter drill bit and we're just going to run the bit along the edge and then we flip it over and we're going to run the bit along the edge you could use a height gauge but that's going to give us a nice center line to run to and basically that's all that's necessary but now we're going to go over to the grinder and we're going to show you what to look out for now, one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're grinding knives is that they start with their strong side. So I'm right-handed, so my strong side when it comes to grinding is to have the handle in my right hand. I find I have more control that way, but what ends up happening is you end up over-grinding this side or grinding this side really well, and then you're chasing the other side with your non-dominant hand. So the best thing to do is to use your non-dominant hand, get that established, and then when you switch over, it's a lot easier to chase with your dominant hand. Now I'm gonna be running this at a medium speed, about 3,500 surface feet per minute, 4,000 surface feet per minute, not my full speed. And it pays to have a super sharp belt. The sharper the belt, the sharper the lines on the grind will be, and it'll be a lot easier. If you're using a blunt belt, that's when you end up getting weird facets and stuff and constantly chasing bad grind lines. But all we're going to do is establish a really steep bevel to the center line and then we're going to roll it back. So we're going to start pretty steep and then we're going to roll it back and constantly checking for that, uh, that height. But uh, we'll get to that now. Might have to adjust the track. I think I've got a really steep edge bevel, but it's come almost to the center line. And now 
now what we're going to do is roll backwards. See how it's getting higher? So we're slowly climbing this way, but you notice that we haven't gone any further which way. one side, we'll establish the other side and go back. Okay, so we've established the bevels uh, and we've left it about a millimeter and a half thick, a little bit thicker than I would normally leave it, but uh, we've left it quite thick for heat treat. But we've got nice even plunge lines and that just comes from practice. You could use a, uh, a file guide along there to guide your grind lines, to grind your plunge lines, but uh, yeah, we've got equidistant and equal height grinds on both sides. And so what we're going to do now is I'm going to heat treat it and then I'll show you how I get it down to zero 
while maintaining this uh, ridge there. Now, the ridge is harder to keep in a convex grind. It's kind of hard to keep in a flat grind. It's much easier in a hollow grind, but obviously I don't like hollow grinds, so we're doing flat. All right, so I'll heat treat it, and then we'll come back to the grinder. So, same deal. Now it's been heat treated. Got that nice gold color from the uh, tempering. Now we're going to grind the bevels again, but we don't want it to move up. We want it to move in. So instead of rocking backwards, we're going to rock forwards. And what we're going to do is actually start pretty, uh, pretty steep and roll in a little bit like that. And then we're going to maintain pressure higher on the blade utilizing the rotation of, you, of the handle. If you were holding a hidden tang, it's a little harder. Uh, in that case, you might want to use the push stick method. I might link the uh, video to my grinding tips above. Uh, but yeah, where, wherever you put pressure on the blade is where it's going to grind away. So we're going to do the same thing, but higher pressure, rolling into the belt a little bit, and that's going to give us uh, that steeper bevel. Nice medium speed with a really sharp belt. This is a brand new belt, so it's been used for wood. You can see we're quite shallow comparatively. And they're starting to creep up towards that line. Okay guys, so I haven't really finished it because uh, I normally hand sand my bevels uh, from there, but you can see we've got nice even height on both sides, tip is, tip is centered, edge is centered, plunge lines are centered, they're a little bit off, uh, they're, they're straight, it's just that that grind is not straight in the choil, so I've got to sand those. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Not a bad for a quick job. And um, you can take that, obviously, up to 1,200 grit off the grinder if you really want to. Uh, I probably need to take it back to the grinder just to get rid of those little 240 grit scratches. And I think this side I have a couple too, right here. But, uh, yeah, that hopefully that helps some people uh, on how to make saber grinds. I would really like to take a moment to thank my beautiful patrons who are sitting here. These guys uh, make my life so much easier and they make making this kind of content uh, a breeze and the <clears throat> support that they give me is uh, so appreciated that I can't put into words. Uh, if you want to help support the channel and uh, you know bring more content like this, uh, both educational and entertainment, you know making all different kinds of cool stuff, I have some really cool projects coming up then go ahead and head down to the description below and uh, join my Patreon. That's www.patreon.com forward slash samtownsbladesmith. Otherwise, you can always check out my Etsy store where I have, might have something like this for sale very soon. Or maybe this one, exa <laughs> exactly this one. Um, 
So yeah, keep an eye out for that. That'll also be linked down in the description below. Other than that, hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.